Welcome to Hancock Shaker Village, folks. I'm Billy Mangiardi. Today we're going to do a live stream with Jim. Been here 21 years. He's our blacksmith. This will be his 21 uh, season. And he's going to do talk to you about and bring you inside our blacksmith shop, which is right out in front here. So next week we'll be tomorrow we'll be doing dockies. Don't forget to tune in on us. And uh, Allison will talk to you all about our little miniature donkeys. Enjoy it, folks. Folks, welcome to the blacksmith shop. Come on in. Uh, behind me here is our forge. It's a coal forge fired by uh, bituminous coal. And now uh, you lit it up well because it takes a while to get it up to temperature. So we have it. The air is supplied by the great bellows, two-stage bellows. By pulling this handle, I introduce the air to the fire. The bottom blast forge. The air is coming through the bottom, through the bed of coal. Uh, okay, go ahead. It's going to be a cold one, similar to this. Okay. And to start off with, we're going to use a piece of quarter-inch square steel. Just like this. So, and we're going to work it on the end. So, put in the fire. Okay. And give it some air. And we know. Okay. All right. So, we get the steel nice and hot. The first thing we're going to do is put a ribbon taper on it. I'll swing around and work on this side so you can see it better. Okay. Okay, we're back. Okay, so now the ribbon taper is completed. You'll see it tapers this way, but not noticeably that way. Our next step in this project is going to be to put the little curly cue in the end of it. And the reason you do that is if you're using it as a coat hook, you don't want a sharp point when you hang your sweater or your coat on it and pierce the material. So to do that, back in the fire it goes. Considerably thinner now, so I have to keep a close eye on it. And we're going to do that on the end of the end. Okay, here we go. it over the handle, the edge, tap it down, and then bring it forward, bring it back to you. The way I do it is we're going to put the big hook part in. So, same thing again. A little bit of heat on it.
Okay, now we have our little curly cue. We don't want to destroy that. So we're going to quench it in the water like that. And bring it back over here. So we do. And we get it down. Totally depends on how big of a hook you want to make. In case you're making a special one for something, or so there we have that part done. Now the situation is well, it's a really nice hook, but it's kind of long. So we're going to cut it off from the parent stock. To do that. The parent stock? The, parent, the, the main bar. Oh, that's interesting yeah. term. Yeah. Wow. So, and if you're only making an individual hook where the lengths don't really matter much, you just randomly cut it. But if, say, you wanted to make four or five, you would make a mark on your anvil, which would give you a gauge to work from. And we're going to use the hardy for this step, which fits into the the tool hole or the hardy hole of the anvil. Why are they called the hardy? I don't know. So, we'll get a little bit of heat on this. Jim, how long have you been blacksmithing? Oh, probably going on for close to 60 years. <laughs> We've been kind of a hobby of our family. So here we go. Did your dad teach you? Uh, he taught me some, yes. yes, yes. So here we go. Bring it on here back to the end. Go. And we're going to say, well, that looks like the right length. Each style of tong has its own name. This happens to be horseshoe tong. Like any craft, everything has. It. Okay, so now we have our hook. Now, there's a couple of ways we can go about finishing the end of it. One is just make a nail point where you can drive it into a beam or a flat spot, which you then punch for a hole and put a nail or a screw in. I think what we're going to do is put a flat spot on this one. So we put it back in the fire. And from now on, all the work can be done with the tongs. Obviously. Beautiful. So, that's really nice, thank you. But, the question now is we have to put a hole in it for the nail or the screw. So, to do that, a few different ways we can do it. 
traditionally it's done with punching it, but for a small object like this, it's really difficult alone to do it. So we could go to the drill press, the post drill, which is right over there, that machine there, and uh, very nice shakers had them. It's basically a hand-powered drill press. Works really good, but it is relatively slow. So what we're gonna do today is, we're gonna punch it, hand punch. Old tool from my grandfather's shop, actually. So here we go. Now what we're going to do is we're opening the punch, and the die is here, and the punch is up here. Got a nice tool, patented uh, June 24th, 1918. So the Shakers theoretically could have had one. Now we bring down the punch like this, holding it approximately on the center. Okay, pull down the handle. Okay, so we got along this far. Here's and it's warm still. It's got a little bit of heat in it, yeah. not much. Now, if the shakers were making a hook, we all know this would have been all they would have done to it. Sometimes we like a little bit of eye appeal. So, and we do have the time, so what we're going to do is put a twist in. And that's going to be done here on the vise. Once again, take the hook. Thank you, Karen Flynn, for donating. Put the hook back in there, fire. And for that, we're gonna use a twisting wrench. There it is. 